Hello and welcome. I'm so tired I can't sleep. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, 2.05. But since I'm still up, let's talk a little bit about the uh, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and uh, chart action. Well, we say on the three hour term time frame, let's even do the one. It's just luck that these Fibonacci lines just do this. It really is. I, I mean, I put these lines in well before it even touched these and everything, but how you support it like this, and then, okay, it weakens, and yeah, you see it breaking below. Oh, fast move down to here, surprise, after it was breaking down at 12. Basically down below the 12,000 number. Oh, surprise. Now, of course, knowing this top bottom or wherever, I mean, it was anyone's game. You're basically at this point, okay, it looks like we're going to 11-2. That's what the message of the market was telling you. Of course, ultimately, it just recently did. But in the meantime, beforehand, oh, there's this move in here. So it's one of two things. It's that original message that was told, but just having its uh, correctionary move. And how many times have I said, oh, if it breaks at this level of support, I'm looking at for resistance. Well, there it is. There's the resistance. In at the 12,216. And just out of curiosity, I haven't checked, but what's the high? 12,212. Uh, so a pierce of by like $3 below, pretty much an exact hit. And then in here we have 11,224. I can see it's a pierce below. Uh, 11,200 even. And it's had a little bit of rally since then, but it's just a little bit of one. It hasn't even came back to this level of previous support yet albeit or not even or as well as the 18 average as well which of course just resisted the lows for quite some time and you see it kept on grinding grinding lower and you notice how you had this uptrend of this low this low this low and this low draw how over the line breaking that leaving the 18 convincingly it had exactly the move that the statement said there okay now what that's the question i asked after something like that and well, we'll see at this stage. Do we have signs that this is going to be the support? We've already had some, obviously. Seeing it via that on the uh, 15 just goes down there, and that's just dust where it bottoms. It just happens to be like pretty much magic that it does it. But it is what it is. And it's and the way, reason why I love it so much is because maybe something like a 50-day moving average, the uh, golden cross or the death cross as they say, all these things and well this oscillator here and this this and that and everyone new sees it and oh it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because everybody sees it. And although albeit the percentage is higher, not many people know how to calculate this. And even at these numbers, this is a little bit advanced how I was calculating these numbers. But I'm able to handle that little bit of advance. That's just who I am. You know, earlier before this video, I was listening to a song, a, a classic and an amazing song, especially for me, because if you know anything about me, you would know that there's a damn good chance that I love this song. And I do. It's Kenny Rogers, The Gambler. And just going over a few of the lines, because some of the key lines are the ones that uh, are not the main ones, but I'm going to go over the main, one of the main ones. Son, I've made my life on reading people's faces, knowing what their cards were by the way they held their eyes. And it does a lot of reference to the poker, and I mean, being a, a poker player, uh, a lot of the other stuff not even included in this it is so true. And when they talk about reading their eyes, see, when I played poker, and when I still play, if I ever play again, and I, of course I will, at least at some point it'll come up, is when you're playing live and the flop comes up, three cards coming down, I'm not looking at the, three, the, the dealer putting the three cards up. I'm looking at one or a multiple amount of my opponents looking at the flop. And then trying to tell, and then I'm trying to see if I can find their cards based that way. Can I see any strength and really and big weakness and things like that? It's this way of my cable making an amazing bluff, an amazing bluff call, an amazing big fold. Because that that can really give you a lot of good profit in the game. Uh, there's a big counter between that and online poker. Online poker you can play in volume, uh, and lower rake percentage and lower rake fees. Uh, live poker you got that. 
And trust me, there's so many situations in live poker or online po online poker. It's like, come on, this is where I totally need to be like, like I need to tell. So if you're going to, th this is the big one here for the, because cause I want to reference this towards crypto trading. If you, and this is for any game, of course. If you're going to, gonna play the game you gotta know how to play it right because there's a lot of people in the trading game that think they know what they're doing but they may not have it right and there's a lot of different ways of getting it right I've came through a whole bunch of different situations on here and there's so many other different ones but it's finding the ones that are right and getting it done now as far as the main 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 uh one of the main uh like courses the one that everybody knows you got to know when to hold them know when to fold them know when to walk away know when to run and just one way i look at it is in uh knowing what coins to hold of course know when to hold them uh, know when to fold them know when to sell basically dump know when to walk away that's going to be the big one the crypto space know when to like go for a super get it but that could even be like as far as like okay bitcoin goes up to 60,000 uh, I mean you're not walking away but essentially what you'd be doing is maybe making big bets or big sells and orders to get out of the crypto sphere and turn it into fiat turn it into precious metals really big which is what we'll get to at the very end on the final one but I know when to run, and I'm looking, how do I look at that? I can look at it two ways. One, I can use it the opposite of this, which is when to go super aggressive, which is the one I chose, and know when to run is like, uh, like, just, like, just go somewhere. I don't know, I was just trying to think of, like, like, just, like, like, run like you'd be leaving, like, running from a casino, and how would you reference it that? I was like, yeah, that's why I went with uh, go super aggressive. Um, you never count your money when you're sitting at the table, meaning... You're not worth your bankroll unless, of course, you sell it at that time. You're like, oh my goodness, and maybe you're still like myself. How much have you lost over the last few days and today? Uh, I've lost four figures. But you know what, though? That happens. I mean, I, I can't count how many times I've lost that in a day. It just happens. And uh, it's a good four-figure number, too. But you know what, though? That's the way it's supposed to be when the bankroll number is that mine as it is. But you know what? That's exactly it. Just don't count it. I mean, I do. I do. But it's, I mean, it's mad. Whatever. It's like, yeah, I'm worth it. But it's going to change. It's going to be up or down later again. But when you look at the bottom part, there'll be time enough for counting when the deal is done. Well, that's like when you're like, okay, that's when you do actually sell. Like, what are you worth? Okay, well, now I'm worth, say, say you're worth a million-dollar bankroll. On, that's where your cryptos are worth. Okay, you pull out a quarter million. Well, that part is part that you count. Now that other three-quarter million you left back, you, you don't count that anymore. I mean, well, you will in time, of course. But the counting, of course, to me is in that sense. And, of course, now, of course, I got all the gold and silver delivered. And, well, technically, I can... I do that. The deal is done as far as, okay, the sell, the buy. I got the sell in at this number. I sold Litecoin at this price. I sold this at that. So on and so forth. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, I like to go over a bunch of different songs. Sometimes I like to try to make parodies on it. At that one there, there was no thinking of making any parody on it. But that is a, a really, really cool song, just going over the lyrics on it. Uh, especially with the whole gambling aspect of it, because when you look at the definition of gambling and investing, they're practically one and one in the exact same. But what what's really wrong with the word definition on such is there needs to be commonality term for two words that are separate from each other, one, which is the presumption of what people think gamblers are. Oh, oh, this person gambles. That means it has to be a loser. They're going to lose because they're gambling. But what happens if they have an edge? What happens if I'm able to say there's uh, something like, say, the World Series of Poker? Every time the first flop card comes up, I'm betting on what it's going to be. So there's going to be well over 100 hands. But I'm guessing it, and I guess the ranking only, ace, two, th three, up to king. But I'm getting 11, or I'm saying I'm getting 15 to 1 odds, or 14 to 1 odds on it. I'm getting 14 to 1 odds for every time I'm right. Now, no one would offer me that. At least no one's, no, no one, unless they're insane or whatever. 
but I'm getting 14 to one, uh, one odds to guess two to king and or ace to king. And, and if I'm right, well, I'm going to do well. But in 130 situations, I'm going to be right, or we'll put 13 situations, I'm going to be right once and win 14 units. And the other 12 times, I'm going to lose 12 and gain two. So that's an advantage, and that's uh, just playing out. But I could have a situation where there can be maybe the, there's like say a uh, hundred and thirty hands but I only successfully got four or five correct and even though the odds were in my favor I still lost and that's gonna happen when you're playing the advantage game and you go through the good luck runs and the bad luck runs and then there's gonna be times where I'll get like 19 or 20 of them and just have tremendous profits and of course, if I'm able to play this over thousands and tens of thousands of hands, then I'm not going to lose. And the reason why I'm saying this in this level is the law of numbers. And the more you can get those numbers in your favor, the larger your, more, your sample size for however like individual trades are concerned and all those sort of mechanisms, the more the odds are going to be in your favor. So in a case if you're day trading, just looking to go long, short, like the traditional way, I don't, I don't do it, and I don't talk about it too often, but more than I should, given the fact that I necessarily don't, I really don't do it. But that is okay. I look for a long or a short play. As was breaking down, oh, I'm going to bet for it to go short in here because, as it was stated in here, this was the statement that it was going to 11.2. That, that that that's what it told me because that's what I said, and then it came up here, it resisted previous high. We see it faltering in here, like I stated, breaking this trend line, this upward move. Okay, so I'm going to bet that it's going to go down. I'm going to put a stop up here, we'll say, which obviously doesn't get hit. And then at some point, you've got your profit, and basically probably right at this low, because oh, I'm going to do... Uh, usually, this is how it's interesting, because as far as trading is concerned, uh, like usually it's Pierce Extra. But as a, a trader... I'm going to do a small pierce above. That's just how it is for me. More conservative. I mean, I don't care if it pierces here at 11.17 and I get, say, 11.25, whatever. Well, so be it. But, of course, it would have been a winning play. But if you can able to give yourself 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 situations to go long, short, or do whatever in the spots like that, and you got yourself a, a, one that works and one that does really, really well in the long term, then the numbers are going to work towards your favor. And what I talk about with what a lot, what I do is just all that about just the mathematical number advantage to a game, realizing you don't have to predict the short term swings back and forth. And you don't have to like always watch a trade after it is and ready to put a stop loss. That's the main thing. I, I suppose if it was, if I could do like an order spot really easy. I mean, that would be so much easier to play the game because, like, for example, when I used, during Alex Ovechkin's rookie year in the National Hockey League, within a sports book, I was saying, yeah, oh, will he score a goal at every time he played, you know, at least over his last 20, 25 games of the regular season of his rookie year, I was saying, yeah, he'll score, oh, it doesn't matter who they were playing, uh, yeah, he'll score, and... Then I would uh, make the bet, make, I don't know, maybe a $200 bet or something, and then I would uh, just leave it. And let's just assume it was, uh, whatever, Wednesday afternoon, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock, I check to see if the Capitals were playing, I seen that they were, make the bet, and then don't even think about it for the rest of the day. And then the day goes on, and something like, oh, 2 o'clock, oh yeah, remember to check Ovechkin, see if he scored. And then something crosses your mind. In 5.30 you do it. And then you check, oh, you check the box score. Oh, he scored. Sweet, I won. I won 230 bucks, maybe. And then that that's the whole point. So here what I'm saying that preference for is maybe I was to bet, like, okay, I want to bet for this to go up or go down. So in this case, I'm going to bet, say, as it's at 11.684, I'm going to bet where I either want to, A, get the buyback order here, or... Or the next one, uh, get out or have a stop loss at this and I can just leave the computer and really never have to look at it. And if I get wrapped up in any kind of trade where I'm like, okay, then I'm just going to keep watching it and keep looking at it and it's just not something that I like to do. So for myself, 
I like the whole mathematical system in uh, which that uh, I got going. And we'll, uh, so over, what I'm really impressed over the last uh, two, three weeks, how many trade volume I'm getting. Because after I played that black screen game for so, for so long, I really uh, figured out just a lot of different ways of getting as many of those uh, swings back and forth. Let the organic uh, large moves take its course for you when they happen. And uh, uh, if you can get the trade volume in, even after 50, well, even, definitely over 50, 60, you'll start to, get, start, start to notice some decent improvements. But 200, 400 days, like, wow. I mean, the amount of, especially if you're able to get with the cross. Like, my favorite one right now is Qtum and Theta. It's averaging, it's averaging almost like, almost a trade a day. It's pretty cool. Uh, two trades just recently today but here we are with bitcoin on the 15 minute time frame since it's got up here it's hanging in there and it's well, looking like we're going to go to the next little bit of a test like i stated at the outset on this or the start of this video this thing still hasn't came to where it came from so it looks like it's making a statement that's what it wants to do next it's at least uh, at least on the shorter terms we go four and one you're going to see a lot more bullish action and here's a spot where you can see on this, uh, this resistance established, how it's pretty much freeing at that area. A couple of periods here were just stayed there, where this time it didn't. It had lower support areas over uh, 136 to like 2 and 4, 204 in the morning. Uh, now starting to break out. And the one minute is definitely going to be uh, showing some more kind of uh, bullish sentiment because you have this high that it goes to at 142. Oh, it's so early in the morning. But you know what, though? I have no reason. I have no plans to do uh, anything for tomorrow. So tomorrow is a not go out date tomorrow, which is cool. Uh, so, yeah, could we, we uh, have this level tested once, tested twice here. At 158. This time, when it tested it at 212, what I like to see on a technical level, how after it did this, both times is that big correction backs down, spending little time on the second one there. And in this time, we managed to uh, come back to this area where it came from. And there we can see at uh, 218, which is like four minutes ago, that this thing was probably looking to uh, take off and have a decent break above this established level of resistance. And in looking at a decent break, I'd be looking at, well, uh, conservatively, 11.543. More realistically, 11.642. I mean, this is a 3x hit level that just seems so obvious that it's going to hit. This is where you don't need to calculate Fibonacci. It's, it's going to work good, and it's probably going to work better, as we've seen on how fantastic these levels have been working. But... Now that's, to me, the statement of what it's trying to do right now. It really hasn't had any clear break, and it's having a little bit of difficulty with 40 seconds to play in this minute. But if it has difficulty, I'm still looking for a support test on the 18 low, something it hasn't had since it's left at 2.08 in the morning. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. And uh, as far as tomorrow's concerned, I'm going to probably get up at 10 again. It's 2.30 now, so yeah. Well, that's okay. And uh, it's off to bed. Bye-bye.